So let's first talk about continuous time. Continuous time representations, so really something like x of t, so that, that we have here continuous representation. And um, there we could have two cases, so we could have periodic signals. periodic signals and um, aperiodic signals. So let's start first with the periodic signals. So if we have a periodic signal, that's quite interesting. So we can write this in the following way. So we have a infinite sum and we compose it essentially of waves. Yeah, so we we have a weighting factor CK and then we just define it as complex phasors here, J two pi K F one and T. So now we need to have a look at this formula in greater detail. So this F one is the most important or the quite surprising result if you think about this the first time. Um, so we have got the so-called fundamental frequency. Fundamental frequency. So what does it mean fundamental frequency? This means if you have a periodic signal, this is the lowest frequency representing the signal. So that's usually the signal what you actually hear or perceive or something like this. So if we have something like a weird signal like this, which is, which has a funny shape and contains definitely different frequencies, then the fundamental frequency is the lowest frequency, which is obviously here, this sine wave here. Yeah. So our, our F1 is then 1 over this t1 here. That's our fundamental frequency. So now, so the interesting thing is that now all, all other frequencies represented here, they are higher than this f1 here. So we see this, this k factor here, this k is a natural number. So this runs from obviously minus infinity to plus infinity, but it's um, so we've got this here. K k can be only one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And so, and therefore, for k equals one, this is our our fundamental frequency. And so now, two means we've got two times the frequency three times the fundamental frequency, four times the fundamental frequency, and so on. And so therefore this means that all frequencies beyond this, there are multiples of this fundamental frequency. So that's quite a surprising result, and I should keep this in mind. In the assignment, we have a classical example of that. Let's look at the heartbeat. So as an example, obviously the heartbeat is clearly periodic. Yeah, so if we have a heartbeat which looks roughly like that, so the so the time let's call this here t one, then this gives us our fundamental frequency f one, and so we know that. The time between heartbeats is roughly, or should be roughly, one second. So this gives us then for f1 roughly one hertz. And so this means that that if we looking at a spectrum, so if this is here frequency, that the first peak in our spectrum here, this should be at one hertz, and then this should be here at two hertz then this should be here at 3 hertz or something like that. 
And so the height of these of these peaks here, these are our CKs. So this is here then um, C1, this is here C2, C3, and so on. If we're looking at the at our at our formula here, the x of t as um, our summation on with our index k, and then we had our ck here, e2, j2, pi, k, f1, t. Yeah, so so we see that the c1 is our fundamental frequency here with k equals one. This gives us this peak here, and then C2 must be 2 hertz, C3 is 3 hertz, and so on and so on. So, so imagine you would like to design a filter which is preserving all frequencies in this heartbeat. Then you know if your filter is, is for example, acting, has a frequency response like this here, then we know that this filter would preserve perfectly the whole signal.